have to do that. I'd love to have it open by Easter. Okay, I would oh, love wow. to have it open okay. by Easter. I will, I will tell you that right now. I would love to have that. It's such an important day for other reasons, but I'll make it an important day for this, too. I would love to have the country opened up and uh, just raring to go by Easter. So we have some breaking news that Donald Trump just said that he would like to, quote unquote, have the country reopened by Easter. That is not an exaggeration. That was Trump just a few moments ago on Fox News, basically rejecting all forms of scientific analysis about this crisis, about what other countries are doing, even conservative-led countries are doing, by suggesting that within a couple weeks, things could be back to normal. Trump is 100% wrong, and he is putting lives at risk by spreading this idea, even if it ultimately doesn't happen. The fact that Trump is suggesting that we could be anywhere near being ready to send people back to work and their daily routines by Easter is absolutely absurd. There is nothing from scientists, from medical experts, from other governments, from other international organizations that suggest that this crisis can be measured in weeks. Everyone else, including Dr. Anthony Fauci, who has often appeared alongside Donald Trump, has suggested that this is something that will take many, 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 many weeks and is something likely more measured in the scale of months, something that's going to take many months to get through. I spoke about this last night, guys, when, you know, Dan Patrick, the lieutenant governor of Texas, went on Fox News, went on Tucker Carlson and basically said, you know, I would be willing to sacrifice grandparents or grandparents would be willing to sacrifice themselves for the economy, for the stock market, for jobs and profits. But I don't know if that actually reflects the will of a lot of working class people. Certainly a lot of people are facing hardship right now because the government hasn't been offering timely and adequate support. And so if there's a choice between, you know, going without food and shelter and then going to work when it's unsafe, many people might choose the latter. But if people were getting the support they need and deserve and want, then they wouldn't be choosing to go to work unless they were in essential industries, which of course still need to be operating at this time. Putting this abstract idea of the economy, the S&P 500, the Dow, whatever you want to call it, ahead of working class people and their lives and the lives of everyone they will touch, senior citizens, grandparents, other loved ones, people who have immune deficiency issues, at the end of the day, that is an unacceptable position for any leader to take, especially the president of the United States, the leader of the world's most powerful country, who has at his disposal all of the scientific facts and knowledge and data you would ever need to make the correct decision, and he's getting that information and he's ignoring it. He's basically spitting on it by saying that he wants to get people back to work, that he wants to get people and the economy raring again, roaring again, to you know make America great again, if you will, when we all know that the only way things are going to return to normal in a way that doesn't lead to millions of lives being permanently affected, if not worse, is by doing social distancing, by keeping only essential industries operating at this stage, and by supporting all those people financially, socially, and in other ways who want to work but cannot because of the social distancing, giving them the support they need. All those people laid off. All those people who run small businesses that can't operate at this stage. We need to support those people, but we have to support them in a way that makes their ability to stay home feasible. That's what we need from the American government. That's what we need from the Canadian government and from all governments is giving people that ability to not have to choose between their economic survival and the public health and safety. And if we give people the funds, if we give people the social programs, we can do that. What Donald Trump is suggesting is unbelievable from my perspective. That he would do this, that he, the man who has as his job description, the protection of Americans, that, you know, the, the guarantee that he would do everything he can to protect American lives and to protect the security of America 
would so willingly put millions of people, literally tens of millions of people potentially, at risk just because he's worried about the stock market shows that he is a sociopathic man that doesn't care about working class people. The Democrats need to be very clear in this moment that they want to provide an alternative to this, that they want to stand with working people and not with the corporations and the stockbrokers and the Republican elite that are driving at this moment to send people back to work because they want the imaginary numbers to rise even as the people affected by it continue to pass away and continue to end up in hospital overwhelming the American health system and overwhelming the global health system because if Trump wants to reopen America, you can guarantee that this will have knock-on effects around the world even if borders aren't closed. Because if we're talking about goods being shipped from America to other parts of the world, those truck drivers, those transport workers will be put at risk if everyone else starts going to work. So like I'm a Canadian. For all my Canadian viewers, if Donald Trump gets his way, those truck drivers who are driving food and other materials and other services and goods into Canada right now, because that's the part of the limited border closure we're allowing essential goods to cross over the border, those truck drivers are going to be far more likely to carry this illness when Donald Trump reopens the country prematurely. So this won't just affect Americans, it could potentially affect the entire world. This is something that we really have to stand tall against. People are not willing to give their lives for Wall Street, for the Dow, for the S&P 500. They're not willing to do it. They shouldn't be willing to do it. They shouldn't be asked to do it. And they shouldn't be in a situation where there's the choice is give up your life for Wall Street or you know lose your home and have an empty fridge, have the inability to feed your children and your family. No one should have that choice.